All right, ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube citizens, y'all know who this is. This is your boy Dash True and Fun Out. <laughs> back at it with another throwback tunes on you guessed it, another Thursday. And this is actually the last Thursday of the month of September. And I am reviewing Thoughts of a Predicate Felon by Tony Yayo. So this joint is his, at this point in time, his only studio album that he ever released. And this joint came out August 30th, 2005. And it was recorded from 2004 up to 2005 under G-Unit and Interscope Records, obviously. The producers involved were 50 Cent, who is the executive producer, Eminem, Havoc for My Deep, High Tech, J.R. Rodham, Domingo, Focus, dot, 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 I crap you now, that's his name, LT Mo, or you could just call it Lieutenant Mo, Megahertz, Punch, Juan Browse, Sam Sneed, Studio 44, Shaw Money XL, and DJ Khaled. DJ Khaled. Yeah, that DJ Khaled. But, um, anywho, moving on. So, let me give you guys some charts. Info on the charts real quick. So, this joint was number two in both the U.S. Billboard Top 200 and in the U.S. Top R&B Slash Hip Hop Albums charts. It was 50th in the Belgian album charts and the French album charts. Third on the Canadian album charts, 34th on the German album charts, 23rd on the Irish album charts, 38th on the New Zealand album charts, 58th on the Swiss album charts, 41st on the UK album charts. And the album was gold, but it sold 750,000 copies in the US and worldwide it sold a million copies, which is very interesting if I do say so myself. Okay, so now let's get on with the track. Sorry, so there are 17 tracks. Out of those 17 tracks, the first track was just the intro, which is basically a skit. So I can give you guys a top five and not a top three. All right, so that's cool. So, any info on the album? And I have to say that is a negative. No interesting info on the album. So let's move on. The first track is called Intro, followed by Homicide. The third track is called It Is What It Is, featuring Spider Loaf, followed by Tata Teller. Next up is actually the first single off this album, So Seductive, featuring 50 Cent. Some of you may be familiar with that one. Track number six is called East Side, West Side, followed by Drama Setter, featuring Eminem and OB Trice. So Eminem produced this one, by the way. Moving on. Track number eight is called We Don't Give a Fuck, featuring 50 Cent, Lloyd Banks, and Olivia. Track number nine is called Pimpin'. We got some info on Pimpin'. Next up is Curious, which is the second single off this album, and that featuring... Joe, not Fat Joe, but just Joe, the RB singer. Track number 10 is called I'm So High, featuring cocaine with K's, not C's. Track number 12 is called Love My Style, followed by Project Princess, featuring Jagged Edge, which is interesting since it features Jagged Edge, but moving on. And Ashley Curious is interesting because it featured Joe, but moving on. Track number 14 is called G Shit, followed by I Know You Don't Love Me, featuring G Unit, which is the third and final single off this album. Track number 16 called Dear Susie, followed by Live by the Gun. That's the last track off this album. All right, let's get on with the three singles, and then, of course, we can talk about Pippin. So, So Seductive, <laughs> see what I did there? That joint came out, the first single off this album, May 17, 2005, featuring 50 Cent. So, here's the thing about this joint, and there's some background info on this. We'll get to it in a second, but I want to see if there was anything else here. And wow, interesting bit of news here. This song was actually nominated. It was nominated for Best Club Banger at the 2005 Vibe Awards, but lost to one thing by my my girl Anne Marie, obviously. <laughs> All right. So let me get on with the background info. So on December 31st, 2002. G-Unit rappers Tony Yayo and 50 Cent were arrested for illegal weapon possession. Following a further background check, it was discovered that Yayo had an outstanding warrant for a previous such charge. As a result, he was sentenced for bail jumping and spent the entirety of 2003 in prison at Lakeview Shock Incarceration Correctional Facility. Oh, that's a long title. Moving on. During this time, G-Unit rose to mainstream prominence following the commercial success of 50 Cent's album, Get Rich or Die Trying, which I reviewed already, which sold 872,000 copies. I had to get my dad's here to key on. In his first week on sales in the U.S., 
It contains the Billboard number one singles in the club and 21 Questions. 21 Questions, very good track, by the way. The group also released their debut album, Beg for Moshi, Mushy rather, in 2003, which featured the U.S. top 15 singles, Stunt 101, good song, and Wanna Get a Know You, great song. Yayo appeared on the song Like My Style, which appears on Get Rich or Die Trying, and on the songs Groupie Love and I Smell Pussy, which are included on Beg for Mercy. During Tony Yayo's incarceration, Ju Yuna began a campaign called Free Yayo, which involved wearing Free Yayo t-shirts, advertising his situation due to the mainstream prominence of the group. Tony Yayo began to receive increased attention from the hip-hop community, becoming known as the mythical fourth member of G-Unit, although Yayo himself was unaware of the coverage he attracted. The campaign received widespread publicity even in countries such as Brazil and Iraq. At the 46th Grammy Awards, 50 Cent and Eminem performed while wearing free Yayo shirts. Yayo watched the performance on television in prison after receiving a call from the Shady Offense advising him to do so. He had never seen the shirts before and was inspired by them to work hard to improve his rapping before he his release from prison. He was granted parole from his sentence on January 8, 2004, but was discovered to be in possession of a forged passport. Following a check from his parole officer, it was sent back to prison until May 25, 2004. Following his release, Tony Yayo appeared on several mixtapes to increase his exposure amongst underground hip-hop audiences and began to record his album, his debut album titled Thoughts of a Predicated, Predicate Felon, how you pronounce it? Almost immediately after leaving prison, although he was still detained under house arrest and required to wear an ankle bracelet and thus could not personally promote any of the album's material. So, So Seductive was released as the album's first single via Interscope in the United States and Canada on May 17, 2005 via music download and was released to rhythmic and urban contemporary radio stations in the United States on May 24, 2005. So there you go with that. And of course, there's a music video for this as well. Let's take a look at the charts, which are manageable for me to read. It was 22nd in Ireland, 28th in the UK singles, 48th in the US Billboard Hot 100, 7th on the US Hot R&B slash Hip Hop Songs charts, 62nd on the US Pop 100, and number 12 on the US Hot Rap Songs charts. And by the end of the year 2005, it was 64th on the US Hot R&B slash Hip Hop Songs charts. So yeah. There you go with that. And it got a, a number of different release dates in terms of radio and releases, things of that nature. So it was released May 17, 2005. All of them 2005, right, right? It was released on May 17th in the U.S. and Canada for digital downloads. And for uh, Urban Contemporary Radio and Whitman Contemporary Radio, it was released in the U.S. on May 24th. And digital downloads on June 4th, it was released in the U.K., Ireland, and New Zealand. And... On June the 7th, it was released as a vinyl single in the U.S. Now, all of those releases were under Interscope Records. Here's where things become, and of course, I'm going to read one more off to you. September 5th, 2005, it was released as a digital download in Australia, again, under Interscope Records. But, as a CD single, which was also released on June 7th in the U.S., Polydor Records did that one, which is interesting, not Interscope. So, yeah, there you go with that. Let's move on. Second single off this album is Curious. So this one came out in 2005. Actually, July 18, 2005, to be more specific. And this is the song that features Joe. And yes, there is a music video and the, you know, involved with this album as well. Now, at the end, though, the video cuts into another Tony Yayo song called Pimpin', which features the video itself, right? It features Junior in it. We'll get more on the Pimpin' song later. So, Curious was 85th on the U.S. Hot R.I.B. slash Hip Hop Songs charts. And that's pretty much it. Nothing else to go on with this one. Now let's move on to the third and final thing off this album called I Know You Don't Love Me, which features G-Unit. And this joint came out November 4th, 2005. And yes, there is a music video for this song as well. And it didn't make the charts. It was number five on the U.S. Bubbling under R.I.B. slash Hip Hop Singles charts. So... Yeah, there you go with that. A little bit of a side note, though, about this song. The song tells the story of how the rappers are engaging in a relationship with the same woman, though she does not know they know, and how they know she does not love any of them because her obvious... Ooh, this took... Okay, I'm, I'm a butcher this word. Flirtationist. 
and love for other rappers. Several other rappers and performers are mentioned in the song along with examples of what she does that proves she does not truly love any of her men as evidenced by the chorus. And I'm quoting here, I know you don't love me. You ain't the same when Jay-Z's around. I know you don't love me. I know you don't love me. You scream and holler when Eminem's in town. Mmm. So yeah, there you go with that. All right, now let's get on to the song Pimpin'. So this is not a single. And let's see. And this is a song expressing Yayo's desire to be able to legally pimp women. I crap you not. That yeah, that that's a legit. So let's look at the background info. So let's see. Move it. The song was okay. No, that's about how the song was made and stuff like that. Blah blah blah. Lyrically, the song describes Yayo's desire to legally pimp women and treat them with a luxurious. I probably said the word wrong lifestyle and refers to how other men simply chase their pleasers or pleasures whichever one you want to roll with the lyrics are backed by a bouncy production which according to the michigan daily writer edwin mcgarvey consists of tiny and i quote in here tiny digital guitar frets so yeah there you go with that and there is a music video for this as well so the music video for this was released as a double music video along with the video for yayo single curious both sections of the video were directed by production group Fat Cats. After three minutes and eight seconds, the video S-E-G-U-E-S, from the curious section to the pimping section will last for a further one minute and 36 seconds. The pimping section of the video is set in a warehouse and features Yayo rapping the song's first verse and first two choruses. With, the, with this footage alternating with the other members of G-Unit Records, members lip-syncing sections of Le, uh, Yayo's lyrics. Whilst all this occurs, several girls, wait, what? Attired in, back, in black rather dance in the background. So, that's the music video for Pimpin'. So yeah, there you go with that. Now I'm about to give you guys my best tracks off this album from worst to first. So let's get things going, shall we? Alright, so without question, Curious is the worst track off this album. The tempo's cool, melody's cool, bass is cool, kick is cool, snare's cool, the track is cool, but it's still the worst track off this album in comparison to everything else. I'm so high. Tempo's cool, melody's cool, simp bass is cool, kick is cool, snare is really cool though, but the track is cool nevertheless. Drama setup. Tempo's, uh, tempo's cool rather, beat pattern's cool, melody is cool. The lack of a bass hurts though, the kick is cool, snare is straight but weak, and the beat screams Eminem. Got some potential, but the track is still cool nevertheless. Love my style, the tempo's really cool, both melodies are cool, thin bass is cool but needs a bit more of it, kick is really cool, both snares are cool, percussions are really cool, track is really cool. Homicide, tempo's cool, melody is cool, bass is cool, kick is really cool, snare is really cool, the track is really cool. Basically, the drums made this track right here. It is what it is is next. Tempo is cool, the melody is really cool, the sip bass is unique but cool, the kick is really cool, the snare is cool but could be better, and overall the track is really cool. Next up is Live by the Gun. The tempo is cool but could be faster. Melody is cool, the synth bass is cool but needs more of it. The kick is really cool, the snare is a bit unique but cool nevertheless. Of all the track is really cool. I know you don't love me. The beat is somewhat of a freestyle classic if you heard this one. The melody is cool, the bass is cool but needs more of it. The kick is cool, snare is really cool, tempo is cool and of all the track is really cool as well. Pimpin', the tempo is really cool. Same as the melody, the bass is cool as is the kick, the snare is really cool, up all the track is really cool, Project Princess, tempo is cool, melody is really cool, seriously needs a bass, the kick is really cool, snare is really cool, up all the track is really cool. And then we got G shit, the tempo is cool but should be faster for this type of beat, drum pattern is really cool at certain points, melody is really cool, the bass is cool, the kick is, is straight? but could be better. The snare is cool, but could be better as well. There's a lot of potential with this beat, but despite that, the track is still cool, really cool rather, nevertheless. Now I'm about to give you guys my top ten, my top five tracks off this album. Tata Teller is the fifth best track off this album. The tempo is cool slash really cool, so it's at that borderline. The melody is really cool, as is the bass and the kick and the snare. Overall, the track is really cool. Fourth best track off this album is So Seductive. The tempo is really cool, melody is really cool, the bass is cool, as is the kick and snare. 
This is a hype track right here. And the track is really cool. The best track on this album is We Don't Give a Fuck. The tempo is really cool, but could be a bit faster. The melody is really cool. The bass is really cool, but needs more a bit. The kick is cool. The claps are cool. The track is really cool, nevertheless. Second best track off this album is East Side, West Side. The tempo is cool, but could be a bit faster. High pitched voice at the start, his second verse is unnecessary, to be honest. The melody is really cool. Lack of a bass hurts, though. The kick is really cool. Nail is really cool. Stretches are really cool. There's some potential here, and the, the track is really cool. Number one track on this album is Dear Susie. The tempo is cool, but will be better faster. The beat pattern is a personal favorite of mine, so I like that one. It's really cool. Melanie is really cool. The bass is cool, but needs more of it. The kick is cool, but needs more bang to it. The snare is really cool. There's some potential here. The track is really cool, without question. So, Dear Susie is the best track off this album. All right, let me give you guys some professional ratings. All Music gave it, and Rolling Stones, gave it three out of five stars. Hip Hop DX gave it, not Comrade, gave it two and a half out of five stars. And Rap Reviews gave it a 7.5 out of 10. So what do I think about this album? This album is actually underrated because it's really all about the beats, more so than the lyrics. I never consider Yayo to be lyrically on par with Lloyd Banks or even 50 for that matter. But the beats really made this album. I'm going to have to give this a four out of five stars. I recommend you download it and you keep it. So yeah. A bit an underrated album if I do say so myself. So I'ma call it a wrap. So with all that said, y'all know who this is. This is Buddy New Jay Gatsby, aka the new Stephen A. Smith. Saying peace out, y'all, and I'll see y'all next time. Yeah.